Okay, so um, we're here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Penduik's yeah, over there. Geez, that's <laughs> yeah, we're, we're uh, here at Cows, just it's a bit dark, it's not raining, it's not too cold. And uh, Penduik just coming down, looks like wing and wing without a spinnaker, I'm not sure. So um, Georgie, we can have some lights. Uh, Georgie will light it up. Light it up, Georgie. Yeah, I think the limp is a bit high. Yeah, okay. So this is a long, lonely journey for Penduik. I can't imagine the emotions going on on board right now. It's very cool. Very cool. We'll zip around behind them. Yeah. There's a bit of a current helping them down at the moment too, which has uh, brought them in pretty quick, a bit quicker than we thought. So uh, looking very cool. Very cool. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Alors bonjour à tous, bienvenue ici en Angleterre pour voir ce bateau que nous attendons depuis des mois maintenant et depuis des longues heures aujourd'hui. Pendu qui est enfin Hello. arrivé et premier. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Good to see you. Wake up. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, looking very cool. Everyone's having a beer, but like not coffee or tea or something. We'll go in pretty close. And, uh... Okay, Ada, I'll be quiet now. I'll be quiet now and you can do the French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, alors, euh, voilà, je ne sais pas trop ce que Don vous a raconté. Pour le moment, nous sommes tous euh, tout excités de le voir. Marie est à la barre, elle a l'air très très contente. Elle est toute sourire. Ils ont tous quelque chose à la main et ça pourrait bien être une bière avant la ligne d'arrivée. Pourquoi pas, n'est-ce pas Et euh, moi, j'ai fait des photos en même temps que, que je vous parle, et donc euh, lorsqu'il y a des accoups, c'est juste parce que j'ai perdu l'équilibre. Ils sont très contents, ils sont en train de saluer Bruno, qui fait un documentaire sur eux, qui est avec nous dans le semi-régime. Et nous sommes Hello. assez, euh, assez sans, sans mots, en fait, en vrai de les voir enfin parce qu'on les attend là depuis on les attendait depuis des heures on les attendait pour plus tard et puis euh, finalement ils sont arrivés euh, ils, sont, ils font dîner là euh, on a dû se dépêcher pour arriver à temps pour ne pas les rater voyez-vous après les avoir attendus aussi longtemps on était à deux doigts de ils étaient censés ralentir et puis ils n'ont pas ralenti du tout Alors, euh, ouais, je ne sais pas si vous, vous le voyez dans les caméras, ils sont tous, tous sourire. Moi, j'ai hâte, évidemment, de vous raconter l'histoire de ce bateau que je, que je lisais encore grâce à votre soutien sur Facebook. J'ai reçu plein d'extraits du livre d'Eric Tabarly sur la construction de Pendulx 6, euh, sur, euh, aussi sur ses premiers essais, sur sa première route boîte, il y a 50 ans. Regardez-le bien, ce bateau. Et dites-vous, il y a 50 ans, il naviguait déjà. Et dites-vous qu'il y a 50 ans, en 76, il faisait la transat, qui était peut-être la plus belle course d'Eric, n'est-ce pas Un bateau construit pour 14 hommes qui faisait une course avec un seul navigateur à bord et qui l'a gagné. Enfin bref, les histoires de ce bateau, il y en a tellement à travers les années, à travers les mers du globe. Et sa plus belle, à mes yeux, s'écrit ce soir, à mes yeux, puisque c'est la seule à laquelle je suis présente peut-être, sa plus belle peut-être s'écrit ici ce soir à Cork, en Angleterre. Oui, il était déjà venu plusieurs fois, et plusieurs fois dans les bruits, rappelez-vous, avec une fois même avec Robin Knox Johnson. Elle est belle pour moi, c'est ça, parce que de voir cette fille que j'admire tant à la barre, l'amener, pour la première fois, un bateau qui a fait trois Whitbreads, qui n'a jamais réussi à la gagner, gagne le, la Whitbread, c'est 50 ans après, en temps réel, en tant qu'on passe de cette quatrième étape aussi, et peut-être, peut-être même, en temps compensé avec les handicaps, la course en entier. Ce qui donnera raison à 
à son constructeur, à celui qui l'a construit pour des causes, avec des handicaps. Enfin bref, il y aurait tellement, tellement, tellement de choses à dire. Euh, moi, je vais arrêter de parler pour faire quelques photos. Boy, we'll stop speaking a little bit to take some pictures. <laughs> okay, go for it. Because all I'll my pictures are, are so, uh, uh, It's actually a beautiful night out here. It's not that cold. It's probably about 15 knots of breeze from the southwest, I think it is. So uh, it's all looking pretty, pretty good. Uh, Georgie, have you got the covers off the light? Yeah, okay. Um, so it's all looking pretty cool. And they're making pretty good speed. Georgie, Georgie, keep the light out of the spray. Keep, get the light up high, getting spray all over it. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Okay. So, uh, looking good. Amazing. You know, I'm always amazed at the sales. They've been all the way around the world, and I've got to say, they're uh, Dacron, but they're looking pretty good. Um, so, radial cut, mainsail and mizzen. So, moving along very nicely. Breeze on the helm there. Probably enjoying every minute of this right now. So, it's actually hard to believe looking back to when we started here in September last year. It was all a bit surreal when they took off. Everyone was on the boats and we were sort of heading out there and it just sort of seemed like starting a yacht race. And then you sort of started to think a few days later that crikey, they're off around the world. And now it seems funny that people are coming back after, we, after we've been to Cape Town and Auckland and Punta and. Uh, all the way up the uh, up the Atlantic again, and this was really a little bit cruel this leg because um, because just tough, slow again, hot, sticky, fluky weather, you know, all a bit crazy. And Maria, of course, went out wide on the clipper ship route very early in out of uh, Punta, and it probably paid dividends at the time. They were very bold sticking with it because they were heading 90 degrees away from the course, but I think it worked out okay at the end of the day. And certainly it was pretty clear that the um, you know, biggest boat in the fleet should be leading of the pack. But the turnaround is that they're also uh, gonna claim IRC, which is handicap performance. So it means even though they're the biggest boat, and yes, they're here first in, they've actually sailed, uh, potentially sailed better than all the rest of the fleet on leg four because uh, they're the IRC leaders at the moment as well, which is very impressive indeed. Got a really cool crew. There's been a lot of rotations with the crew. Marie had a policy of generally trying not to have their uh, rotating crew on for any more than two legs so she could share the experience with people, which was really quite a cool attitude as well. Uh, Tom, of course, the chief mate, he's been on all the way around. He's a bit of a champion, that guy, I've got to tell you. <laughs> he's uh, quite an interesting character. And uh, they've had a, a eclectic mix of nationalities and peoples and talents and all sorts of things so you know, it's not just a bunch of pros driving this boat it's a, a big mix of true amateur sailors you know out for the whole adventure so it's very uh, a very cool story and i'm sure you know we, we talk about marie the skipper and it's her own story she's her own hero but I, i'm sure that her father is uh, looking down on this thinking hey this is cool <laughs> so And if there's older sailors out there that were following the very early Whitbreads back in 73, which I was doing as well, you know, this boat was to the fore in so much stuff. And we're speaking to Che, Che by our patron, you know, we were uh, having a chat I about various him. things. I and, gave both of the pictures. Oh, okay. And uh, this boat was arch rival for uh, GB2, you know, and they had lots of uh, fun times together. And he's sending his best regards to uh, all of the, the crew and the sailors on board. We might be getting close to the to the start line. Georgie's running that side of it. They're getting ready for a big group shot. Oops. I'll try and get in here. Yeah, but they're on the other side. Don't advance a little bit. Yep. We cannot see them. Yeah. Ah, uh, can you see it? Yeah, we're looking for the line at the moment. That's okay. We Thank you. 
Okay. okay. The problem is we have them only from the back. Yeah, yeah, they're on the other side. I'll try and drop yeah. in there. They're taking a shot, but I'll try and sneak in the other side. Oh, oh, we got there. Got their bit coming. Okay, look this way, look this way. Everyone over this side. Oh, oh. <laughs> They're doing a few dummy setups. Paris Match are doing a very big uh, 12 page feature. 12, 12 page feature on uh, Marie and the crew of Ben Buick. Here we go. Here we go. They're on our side now. <laughs> Very cool. Oh. Sorry? They're crossed? Oh, Jeep, it's very hard to pick it here. The other end of the line's a long way down, so. Uh, anyway, I think they're going to transfer a photographer on. I think they've just crossed the line on near enough to it. You're probably seeing it easier on the tracker than we're getting it out here. We'll use the tracker for uh, this. I think they crossed, Ada, if you want to do a commentary. Yeah. Oops. You, you finished? Wanna... Yeah. There you go. Donc du coup, euh, on était, je ne sais pas trop ce que vous a raconté Don, si c'est l'histoire du bateau ou pas. Moi, j'étais en train de faire les photos et je ne sais pas ce que vous voyez dans le noir, mais j'espère que vous voyez cette énergie, cette énergie qui dégage, non pas du bateau et non pas seulement de Marie, mais de ce jeune équipage, de ce nouveau jeune équipage qui vient de faire un tour du monde, qui vient de le finir ici. Et, et je me disais tout à l'heure en les regardant combien de jeunes équipiers depuis tout ce temps ont appris à naviguer et combien de de Philippe Poupon, d'Olivier de Kersezon, combien d'autres noms de Laval ont des souvenirs ici et combien de ces jeunes gens seront des noms de la voile dans les années à venir. Voilà, ce sont des choses comme ça qu'on se dit, il y aurait tellement de choses à dire, il y aurait tellement de choses à dire sur le bateau, sur la course de Marie, euh, sur, sur les, les différentes étapes, parce qu'on l'a vu se révéler, pour moi, elle s'est révélée à travers des étapes. Et, et, et là, en train de faire la manœuvre. Euh, je disais que on l'a on vu se révéler au, au, étape après étape en fait. Je ne sais pas si vous vous rappelez son arrivée à, son arrivée à Cape Town, euh, son arrivée à Auckland et son arrivée à Punta et son arrivée ici. À chaque fois, il y a une forme de... Moi, moi je trouve il y a une autre Marie qui se révèle. Enfin, après, c'est juste moi. Euh, mais c'est peut-être aussi juste l'assurance qu'on gagne avec les milles, avec les étapes. Je vais essayer de, 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 de refaire quelques photos parce qu'alors, on a mis avec un iPhone. So c'est terrible de donner avec un iPhone, c'est que. C'est qu'elles sont extrêmement floues et qu'il faut en faire tout un paquet pour avoir quelque chose. Je pense qu'ils vont transférer un photographe sur bord. Je pense que so. Oh, maybe. Yeah, just rounding up now, getting ready to probably drop some sails. The light is better this side of the boat. Yeah, there was a plan at one point to put the photographer on board and do a bit of sailing, but I think they're uh, heading maybe up it's to too drop windy. the main sail. Maybe it's too windy for. Oh, uh, it's pretty good at the moment, but I think they're going to go out sailing again tomorrow, or the day after, or something. Um, 
So, then I will be back cool. to tell you French stories in two minutes after they drop the main cell. Okay. <laughs> so which one? After they drop the main cell, I will come to tell you a lot of French stories. Okay. It, it's just because <laughs> we didn't have enough light on the other side. Now it's better. It's more light. Or maybe more sails yeah. to, re to reflect the light. So they've uh, just uh, completed their circumnavigation of the entire world, which is pretty cool. And I know um, everyone on board now and all their other teams and the other crews that are watching this. There's a few people uh, on maybe the Maybe now. Maybe now the photographer. I don't know. Oh, I know. Um, uh, very excited to know that everything's happened. There's always an element of the unknown when you plan a circumnavigation. You know, you can have the best prepared boat and the best crew and things like that, but things happen and it's a long way. You know, they've been out for a long, long time. So uh, it's always nice to get it done, you know, and then they can relax. They won't have to think about weather all the time. They've still got to sail back to France, and uh, I know Marie's keen to wait for a couple of the others to turn up if she can, uh, and then get back to. Uh, Get back to France and have some big parties. You know, then I, I was thinking this boat when, when Tabarly had the idea of this boat after yeah. Penny Three, it was for the wheat bread because he wanted to go around the world with a bigger boat, even yeah, with yeah. the handicaps with the ERC. Yep. He knew it was a possibility because the boat was more powerful, quicker, 14 people on board to be uh, to have more uh, more space to be to sleep, etc. And some, someone told me a few days ago that actually they thought that Tabarly never won any wheat bread because no. he didn't prepare enough, especially the first one. He didn't have time <laughs> to sail. And yeah. when I was watching Marie, I realized that she's preparing this boat since two years. And so yeah. it means then that Eric Tabarly's idea was a good one because in this race with handicap, with ERC, he might win. We, uh, we yeah, it was, IOR, it was, it was an IOR handicap system back then, it's really hard to say, but it was certainly a pretty cool boat. And uh, Che on GB2 picked up you know, the, eight of the, the whole bunch of the trophies that were on offer for the whole race when they got around, but uh, there's no question uh, Ben Jewett would have been a hot boat if he had have had the reliability, but it was just mastered twice, uh, all sorts of issues, so, uh, so that was a problem, but anyway. Um, such, such is life, and Marie's now sailed around the world, and uh, uh, a lot of people will be jumping for joy right now. A lot of people will be very happy, not least of those who will be Marie. You know, I think the magnitude of it will sink in in the days and weeks ahead. So, all pretty cool. J'étais en train de dire à Don en anglais tout à l'heure, mais je me suis un peu embrouillé dans mes explications en anglais. Et il se peut fort probable, je parle devant les spécialistes de la navigation que vous êtes, vous, beaucoup d'entre vous, mais je me disais que peut-être, euh, voyez-vous, peut-être le pari que faisait Eric Tabarly lorsqu'il a construit ce bateau, vous le savez, un, euh, pour la Wipper de 73, c'était, euh, il pensait qu'un bateau plus puissant, en fait il l'a construit pour qu'il puisse gagner tout type de course. Oui, une course autour du monde avec les mers du Sud, mais aussi à ta course. Yeah. Over that side. Yep, yep. Et, euh, no, no, yeah. Et tout était réfléchi pour que ce bateau, même s'il est grand, même s'il fait 30 tonnes, même s'il est très puissant, euh, puisse quand même gagner. Euh, parce que vous savez. Euh, Doing some short tacks to work their way back up towards uh, Trinity Landing. And the Royal Yacht Squadron they used their finish line, very famous finish line. And this is a very auspicious place to finish the race. I mean, not as easy as. A place for people to get to, you know, so there's not thousands of crowds. It's a funny time of the day as well. But anyway, um, it's a very significant place for sailors. Everyone knows the, uh, the Royal Yacht Squadron and, and uh, this particular line that's used for the fast net, a lot of the transatlantic races, and all sorts of things. So we're very happy to be here. So the other thing, of course, that all these times and finishing times and so on, they're provisional, nothing's official until we complete all of the uh, declarations and obligations under the notice of race and uh, check the seals on things and bits and pieces because we have a whole series of uh, philosophical rules or, or uh, guidelines in the, in the race and then there's the actual uh, rules of the race. So um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, on a left in the whole thing and once all those 
compliance issues are complete, uh, get issued a blue card. And once you've got your blue card, you can leave the marina and everything's signed off and then it becomes official. But uh, we're still celebrating the whole thing as being Lion Honours in Leg 4 and IRC winner of uh, Leg 4 as well. And, uh, the, no, the line's finished. They're across the line. Oh, they're across oh yeah, the yeah, line. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's Bruno, he's doing filming a documentary on, uh, on the whole of Ben Duick and Marie and the team and stuff. So, um, we've got Tim on the boat as well, our illustrious photographer. And uh, Rob up there filming for the doco, and Jane Jane doing the camera, and Ada doing commentary, and Georgie holding lights and doing the official side. So, uh, Very happy to step ashore. Okay, we could actually shut this down, I think, and then oh, uh, sorry, head back but, to the uh, marina. Yeah, sorry. You reckon? I was thinking you are still speaking. Yeah, no, I reckon we could probably shut it down and uh, head back to the yeah, marina for after when they get there. Otherwise, so now they will drop the sails. Yeah, and they're just they sailing back up bit. and then they'll actually come down again. So, uh, Jane, Jane, we're going to uh, we're going to call this so you can bring it around here. We'll shut it down and go back to the marina, I think, uh, and be ready for when they arrive. Okay, so yeah, we fit ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Jane, Jane. Turn your camera around this way and Ada and I will sign off. Okay. So thank you, Ada. Well, thank you, Don. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Penduk. It yeah. was super exciting, even if we couldn't see so much in the dark. Absolutely. Yes. But, and uh, we'll be back again. At the pontoon. At with the, the champagne. I hope, he's, I hope you this have his cold. This is real French champagne. Of course, we have left it outside in the cold. We didn't ah. put it in the fridge. We left it outside oh, in the cold. Oh, <laughs> Hopeless. You are so hopeless. Yeah. So no, anyway, I'm, I'm sure he's joking. Okay. I'm sure the champagne will be fresh. Yes. Thank you. See you soon. See you later. Back again on the pontoon. Oh, pardon. Okay. Thank you. Oh, it's on the night.